All studies clearly point out towards a serious water strife. Water strife will naturally transform itself into a civil strife. Before I fall dead, let's fix it to whatever extent we can so that uh, future generations don't look back and see we were the most irresponsible generation ever. The United Nations studies say, if you plant one trillion trees on the planet, the entire climate change process can be reversed in about twelve to fifteen years' time. We are talking about planting two hundred forty-two crore trees in the region. Please stand with us and make this happen. Anybody here has any proof that you are not already in heaven and making a mess out of it? If you have decided you want to live in a loving world, a joyful world, that must be throbbing within you every moment. Let's make it happen. People are thinking uh, this water crisis has suddenly come upon us. Crisis did not happen suddenly, it's been evolving in the last thirty years quite seriously and the rural populations have been massively suffering this. You have heard of uh, any number of farmer suicides. People always think it's because of the bank or the loan. Yes, that is also a factor, but you must understand when soil and water depletes, a farmer's life is finished. Nearly sixty percent of the soil is labeled as distressed soil. That means we are moving to a place in another twenty-five, thirty years' time, we may not be able to grow the food that we need in this country. Whatever plans we have, whatever great infrastructure and businesses we are building and science developing, but when there is no water and food, the level of civil crisis that will happen will demolish the nation in many different ways. It is not far away before those villages and rural areas where water is completely run out, those people are going to migrate in large numbers into urban centers. For them there is no infrastructure, they will sit on the streets. How long will they sit on the streets when there is no food and water? They will break into homes. In next eight to ten years you will see these situations unless we do something drastic right now. This is the time to really take action and the action is very clear. It is established, well established scientific data to show that every… every tree that you plant, in about twelve years' time when the tree is big enough, it will sequester approximately thirty-eight thousand liters of water. We are talking about planting two hundred forty-two crore trees in the region. This is not going to be planted by us. Farmers are going to take this up as economic activity and the saplings are going to come from contributions that come from people. This is where we need your support. And apart from that, the government has to incentivize a farmer from moving from regular three-month, four-month cropping to a tree-based cropping unless we make farming process a very lucrative process. In many ways, we are threatening the future of this nation and that's why this uh, rally for rivers and now the Kaveri calling. The United Nations studies say, if you plant one trillion trees on the planet, the entire climate change process can be reversed in about twelve to fifteen years' time. Kaveri calling commitment for me and everybody else here is not for today, we are committing ourselves for twelve years. Please stand with us and make this happen. First, want to say it's a huge honor to be here on stage with you. Um, we all know what a big youth inspiration you are, and the things you're doing for 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 the environment is just just inspiring all of us. Uh, so happy that uh, you started this campaign to um, you know help River Kaveri, and and um, just want to ask you. How big a responsibility is it to revive a river and how do you plan on doing it single-handedly? 
without uh, a large-scale people's involvement, this is not going to happen, never before. Another generation has consumed as much as we have. So, I'm just thinking, before I fall dead, let's fix it to whatever extent we can so that uh, future generations don't look back and see we were the most irresponsible generation ever. So many of us are unaware of, of, of situations and can you throw some light on how this has happened and what we can do? The most basic ignorance about rivers is, people think river is a, a source of water or a well is a source of water or a pond or a lake is a source of water. In a tropical country, it is not a source of water, it is only a destination for water. There is only one source of water for us, which is the monsoon rain. Somewhere between forty-five to sixty days maximum in a year, rain pours down on us. A huge volume of water comes down. If we hold it, then it flows three hundred sixty-five days. If we do not hold it, it will run away within the next fifty or hundred days. So what allows us to hold the water? The only and only thing is vegetation. This has been my main mission across the world, including United Nations, our government, central government, all the states. We convince them, you cannot hold water in a dam, check dam, barrage, all these things. These are all okay for usage, but you cannot really enhance water like this. The only way you can hold it is by vegetation. We are 1.3 billion people, it's estimated by uh, 2030, we will be 1.5 billion people. So there is too much pressure on the land, there is no way to increase the forest cover. The only other way is to go for agroforestry, that we use forests as a livelihood for ourselves. So right now, uh, to assist the farmer to shift to agroforestry, there are a few things to happen. One thing is the saplings, large-scale development of saplings. Now to act, we are looking at taking in all the aspects. It costs about forty-two rupees per sapling. In the first phase of four years, we need to plant seventy-two crore trees. If uh, you can campaign a little bit… I'll do that <laughs> Whatever I'm saying, whichever way you think is appropriate. Like this, everybody must do what they can. It is not a question of resource, it's a question of how concerned we are. This is not just Kaveri's problem. Only thing is, if we successfully demonstrate that you can turn the river around. Kaveri is a substantially large demonstration. If we do this one thing, then you can do this for every river in the country. If we fail to rejuvenate this soil and this water, the civil strife that is waiting on our hands is big. All studies clearly point out towards a serious water strife. Water strife will naturally transform itself into a civil strife. So when we talk about this 242 crore trees, what it means is it can sequester anywhere between nine to twelve trillion liters of water. If in twelve years you plan this number and wait for another six, seven years time, you will have Kaveri flowing full on. But we must understand, we must have that much commitment. If not for my country, at least for your children, please do something. I think uh, a lot of them have been misled by the title Beyond Boundaries. They think you're going to hit a sixer or something. <laughs> well, are we? <laughs> well, today we're not talking about a ball going beyond boundaries. We're talking about you and me going beyond boundaries. If your body is dominant, you think, feel and act in a certain way because you think through your body or your intelligence works for the boundaries of your body. So naturally, survival instinct will be the strongest, strongest dimension of who you are. 
When survival instinct is strongest, you always want to build a wall around yourself. When survival instinct is strong, you want to build a wall of self-preservation. The walls of self-preservation are also walls of self-imprisonment. What looks like protection today is imprisonment tomorrow. Now, the whole science of yoga is about breaching the boundaries of your psychological and physiological structure so that you imbibe more and more life. So after some time, the life that you are becomes more dominant than the body that you are, than the thought and emotion that you are. When your life becomes very significantly more than the psychological and physiological processes, if you sit here, you are a significant life, not necessarily because of what you do and do not do. You are just a significant life, simply by existence you are significant. Once it happens like this, uh, effortlessly you can function. By the time I was eight, ten, there was a cloud of a billion questions around me all the time. And uh, I didn't find a single person who could answer a question straight. <laughs> My thing is, I want to know what is true. I don't want to know what a certain authority said, because in my mind there's never been an authority of any sort for anything. And out of frustration that not a single question is being answered, I wrote very hard poetry to insult people. <laughs> Unfortunately, all this eight hundred and odd poems uh, got burnt and it was in Bangalore that they burnt all my poems <laughs> Kaveri protests were happening and they burnt my car. Along with that, my eight hundred and odd poems and my observations about India's agriculture, which ran into, I don't know, several hundred pages, both these things and my lifelong collection of music, all these three things got burnt up <laughs> in that car. So, uh, yesterday we launched Kaveri Calling, it's really crazy that now I'm back here and we're talking about this <laughs> Much later on, when I figured out certain things within myself, then poetry became an expression of what is happening within me or what I see. So yeah. mystic poetry is only trying to confuse you. I know scholars are trying to draw conclusions, but it is only trying to confuse you so that all your faculties are up. That's all you can do in this life that everything that you have must be up and alert, then something may happen. If your antenna is up, something may touch you. It's not that there is something wrong with your life, that's not the problem. The problem is, there is much more possible which has remained unexplored. In our lives, if we do not do what we cannot do, no problem. In our life, if we do not do what we can do, we are an unfolding disaster, isn't it? This is all we are looking at. Just to see that there are right kind of tools, you can enhance the performance of this life to a higher possibility than the way it is right now. At least you could be more joyful, more peaceful, more wonderful to yourself and to everybody else around you, possible or no? This doesn't mean you're nasty, this doesn't mean you're horrible, no. This just means there is room for improvement because this is the nature of life. However we do it, there is a better way to do it, always. This is the most wonderful aspect of life, that we can always do it better. As we have created objective tools to enhance our activity in the world, we have to also create subjective tools to enhance our experience in this world. That's what we are looking at. That is what Shambhavi means. Shambhavi is a subjective tool with which you can enhance your life's experience. Shambhavi Mahamudra means just this, 
if you sit here, in your experience, your body is here, your mind is out there, what is you is elsewhere. Once there is a clear distinction between what is you and what is your body and what is your mind, this is the end of suffering. Anybody here has any proof that you are not already in heaven and making a mess out of it? Hmm? Do you have proof? You are already in heaven. See, if you don't understand what I am saying, take off from this planet and float around somewhere above solar system and look down. Of all the damn things that you can see, planet Earth is definitely heaven. If you and the person next to you start fighting right now, this will become your hell. If you look at each other with some sense of appreciation and love for each other, this will become your heaven. If you have decided you want to live in a loving world, a joyful world, that must be throbbing within you every moment. Some people will get converted, some people won't. So what? At least you are. As long as you are, your life is wonderful. Let's make it happen. Huh?